which is um, possibly uh, 17th century, 18th century uh, Swahili settlement, uh, whose funding is uh, founding is uh, attributed to uh, the monarchies of uh, Pate. Uh, its founding uh, is believed to have uh, been one of the uh, disgruntled members of the monarchy in Pate uh, that uh, decided to separate and establish uh, a new uh, kingdom or rather settlement for itself. So we abandoned the uh, uh, disputes and left and went and uh, established V2. So V2 uh, has connections with the Nabahanis, uh, the Nabahani dynasty of Pate, uh, and even quite a number of the residents there we still have their uh, ties and their connections uh, with the Pate old town. Uh, this town uh, was one of the first to fall under the, uh, the Germans. Um, it was discovered by the Germans who were uh, uh, trying to come up to establish missionaries uh, at the mouth of the Delta. So they um, landed in uh, some of the small villages along the Delta. Uh, the seeding of uh, the seeding of the German East, uh, the German Witland is actually as a result of uh, a treaty uh, that was reached between the British and the Germans at the end of the First World War in a treaty known as the Heligoland Treaty, uh, in which uh, Germans ceded uh, some of the interests within the uh, British occupied territory, and of course in exchange. Uh, for German, uh, for British uh, occupied territories to the south. So eventually uh, the Germans moved to Tanganyika and they ceded Witu to the British, over 200 years old. And uh, you can actually see uh, a blend of European influence in the urban planning as well as in traditional architecture. The, the town is characterized by uh, essentially uh, the traditional uh, mud and wattle building uh, which is a, a very prominent Swahili structure uh, and ma 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 most of it has survived uh, and uh, of course it is one of the towns that has uh, uh, enjoyed continuous uh, occupation as compared to the other uh, applying Swahili settlements in the region uh, that were abandoned eventually uh, uh, including the uh, Shaka including Moana, Ungama, Kau, uh, and Ozi. And eventually, uh, more German interests started to develop. Uh, two brothers uh, who had established themselves in, uh, in Lamu, the Danad brothers, uh, were among the initial people to establish that contact uh, with the, uh, what came to be known as the Witu land. And of course, eventually, uh, it was also far one of the earliest uh, German uh, areas to be designated under the German East Africa Company as uh, the German Witteland. Yeah, so it became a, a, an area of uh, interest for Germans, and especially because it was at the center of a very lucrative uh, uh, trade in uh, uh, collecting uh, game trophies and other natural products from the neighboring uh, forest. When the Germans eventually uh, settled in Mitu, they did well, well, a, a number of things, and one of them was to introduce uh, some kind of urban planning to control the growth of that town. Uh, this is a very, very uh, evident and can be linked to the one that was introduced uh, within the town of uh, Tanga. So they introduced this uh, uh, gradient system, no, not gradient, but uh, a system that is based on some kind of grid system. Yeah. Square. You can see houses aligned in straight lines. Uh, and then there's also a building that which they utilized uh, right uh, at the waterfront. Uh, this building uh, was eventually used as an administrative building by the 
even the post-colonial chief. Unfortunately, it is not very good uh, state of conservation. Other German interests or German associated interests include the Bunia building. Uh, the Bunia building, of course, was established initially as a, as a place for providing assistance for cattle herders in the neighboring region. Uh, of course, he was a, a, a Swiss, but of German descent. Uh, 